Hello, my name is Christine Luby, and I'm an education specialist at the Office of Early Childhood. Studies have shown that mathematics have been shown to be an early predictor of later academic success. The Office of Early Childhood is committed to improving children's outcomes and are excited to be able to bring you part two of the three-part series on early mathematics in order to help teachers understand how they can strengthen math in their early childhood classroom. In part one, we looked at number and operations of the Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines. In part two, we're going to shape your understanding of geometry and spatial sense in the early childhood classrooms. Children are naturally drawn to the, the geometry field from a young age. Think about some of the favorite toys or activities of young children. Blocks, puzzles, art, the sand and water table. Each of these has components of geometry or spatial sense. However, all too often, not much time has been spent on laying a solid foundation of mathematical learning and making the connections between what children are so naturally drawn to and the learning that is taking place concurrently. Let's take a moment and look at the widely held expectations from the Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines for children ages 3 to 5 regarding geometry and spatial sense. Remember, Widely held expectations are generalizations for where most typically developing children should be. During this age, children should be developing knowledge of geometric principles. They are beginning to classify and sort shapes, recognize and name shapes, and combine shapes to make other things or patterns. Children are also developing their spatial sense by using comparison words and describing the relative position of things. Children are using both their geometric skills and spatial sense to group similar objects and tell why those objects are grouped. So let's look at what this means for children. To show mastery and development in these areas, children might use a pegboard to create geometric shapes using rubber bands, or use spatially descriptive words such as over or under. A child might be lining up blocks by size or shapes or using magnetiles to create a structure or new shape. As I said earlier, children come to many of these activities naturally. However, it takes a teacher to be able to extend the child's learning and engage them in a mathematical conversation. Let's first look at some times when teachers may have gotten it wrong. Much of the knowledge children have about shapes has been set prior to the age of six, and sometimes the knowledge has been accidentally misshapen. Think about some of these statements. Two triangles make a rectangle. Or if you cut a square in half, you either have two triangles or two rectangles. Or diamonds are squares turned on their sides. However, as these images depict, that isn't the case. Sometimes as educators, our generalizations set children off with a shaky foundation for their geometric knowledge. So as educators, let's shape up and look at some of the big ideas for children to understand in geometry. First, shapes can be defined and classified by their attributes. An easy way for children to learn about shapes is by sorting, which happens in a lot of classrooms. However, rather than asking children to put all the circles here and the triangles here, children must first really learn what those shapes are and what defines each of the shapes. Instead of saying, this is a rectangle when holding a piece of paper, talk about the number of sides, the number of corners, the lengths of the sides. When describing rectangles this way, it allows children to look past things like size or color or even orientation in order to determine the shape. Think about triangles. Triangles have three straight sides with no gaps, three corners, and the angles all add to 180 degrees. However, many times children get confused by the orientation of the triangle and only recognize one type of triangle. It's important as educators to provide children with multiple examples of shapes in varying sizes and orientations and even colors to help children understand what makes a triangle a triangle. In our efforts to shape up, it's also imperative that we acknowledge three-dimensional shapes in addition to two-dimensional shapes. Another big idea for kids to learn is two-dimensional shapes can make up parts of three-dimensional shapes. Unfortunately, some teachers have encouraged children to learn about shapes by focusing only on two-dimensional shapes through worksheets or the shape of the week. However, a more meaningful experience with shapes 
comes from a toy area that all early childhood classrooms should have. Block areas provide children with opportunities to explore solid shapes and make connections between two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional shapes. It's important for children to understand that a rectangle on the paper can look like a part of the block, but the block has more than one rectangle and that when they are put together, it makes a three-dimensional shape. A great exercise to help children distinguish between two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes might be to find things like a can or like a box rather than searching only for rectangles or circles. It's important for children to understand there is a strong connection between what children see on paper and the shapes of objects in the world. As we continue our shaping up, it's important to help children understand that shapes can be combined and separated or composed and decomposed to make new shapes. Allowing children to make pictures with shapes engages them in exploring how rotating, combining, and changing sizes can produce varying results. This can also help children build on their understanding of the relationship between two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. These foundational activities and understanding that shapes can be combined or separated leads to more complicated mathematical skills of fraction and area. Now let's shape up our understanding of children's development with spatial sense. Children's first experiences with spatial reasoning begin at birth when infants are learning to reach and grab or hold things that are hanging in front of them. As they grow and develop, toddlers are maneuvering their bodies as they crawl, cruise, or walk to a loved one or favorite toy. In preschool, they are able to locate things or decide how to get from one place to the next. Moreover, they are starting to represent space by describing relationships between objects and locations or by drawing or creating models like with blocks. The first big idea for children to understand is that the relationships between objects and places can be described with mathematical precision. When children grasp this concept, they know that where something is can be conveyed by talking, drawing, writing, or creating models to represent movement and direction. Have you ever asked a child where something is? For example, where they could find a piece of paper? A child who is still developing their spatial sense might respond with, over there, and make gestures. As an educator, you can add to their description by extending the vocabulary. Yes, the paper is over there in the art area on the shelf next to the markers. Increasing your vocabulary with children allows children to experience more precise directions. Think about the use of block play to increase children's spatial skills. While building with blocks encourages children to move and build with precision, think about how as an educator you can enhance block play by using language such as on the right, or next to, or across from. Encourage children to build something known, such as the playground, to help children think about the different pieces of equipment and where they are in relationship to each other. Another skill to help enhance mathematical precision is through movement activities, games, and dancing songs, such as the Hokey Pokey or Tutita. These songs help children move their bodies through space while following directions. As we continue to look at spatial sense, it's important for children to understand how their experiences with shapes and space help to develop their points of view or perspective. Learning about perspectives other than one's own takes much practice and experience. Think about how it looks when you are facing another person and are both asked to hold up your right hands. A child would likely be confused that it looks as if one person isn't following the directions. Let's look at this depiction of a street of houses. When children are asked to draw a house, it's almost a universal assumption, based on their experiences, that they will draw it from the street view. Much like when asked to draw a picture of a person, children almost always draw them as if they are facing the person. It takes an educator to encourage children to look at things from a different view in order to help the children understand that there are other perspectives as in this bird's eye view of the city rather than just the street view. Encouraging children to think about objects from different perspectives through activities like creating replicas of their home using 3D objects, such as milk cartons or boxes, or to draw a map after taking a walk, or even laying under a tree to draw what they see of the tree as they're looking up, allows children to develop their understanding of the world. 
The final concept of spatial sense for children to understand is that spatial relationships can be visualized and manipulated mentally. As children develop this idea, they are learning how to hold a spatial representation in their mind and can move it or manipulate it to make it fit. This skill can be enhanced by educators providing multiple opportunities for puzzles, pattern block activities, and work with filling and emptying. So the acts of children playing in the sand and filling and emptying measuring cups will later help them with filling the dishwasher. And the more opportunities children have to mold things with Play-Doh will assist in transferring leftovers into an appropriately sized container. Now that we've discussed the big ideas for children, let's talk about how this looks in the classroom and how educators can help children understand these big ideas. To assist with helping children understand the foundational geometry knowledge, ensure that you are providing children with a diverse selection of shape examples. Keep in mind that triangles or rectangles can look many different ways based on their size or orientation, and allow children to see multiple examples of these. Spend time in your block area and look at the types of three-dimensional shapes that children can build with and enhance any areas that might be lacking. Move children towards precision while still encouraging their excitement. As children learn more about shapes, ensure they are not overgeneralizing by calling a slice of pizza a triangle. Acknowledge their excitement while still providing factual information, such as, you're right, that does have three corners like a triangle, but look at this rounded edge. It makes it look like a circle, too. Read the child's readiness to help you determine how far to extend the child's learning. Spend some time dissecting the various two-dimensional shape categories, such as triangles, quadrilaterals, and thinking about curved shapes, as well as the three-dimensional shapes like prisms or pyramids to help guide you in conversations with children. Remember that preschool-aged children have a wide range of abilities, and as their teacher, it is important to be able to differentiate your conversations based on the children's abilities and interests. When it comes to supporting children's understanding of spatial sense, Use rich language in your classroom to extend children's thinking about space. Describe for them their gestures when they are pointing towards something to assist them with their expressive language. Get in the block area and build. Talk with children about their block structures, asking them questions about the spacing and why they chose different blocks for the bottom of their structure versus the top of their structure. Or model and self-talk why you might want to use a different block on the bottom of the structure. Talk about the blocks as you're building, including language about the triangles making rectangles. Another strategy to be mindful of is to encourage equal access for girls and boys. Gender differences in spatial abilities emerge before children enter kindergarten and are largely due to the varying experiences and expectations. Providing children with ample opportunities to move their bodies through space is imperative for later success in spatial thinking tasks. With this in mind, it's important to provide and encourage especially girls with opportunities to go on treasure hunts, to be physically active, and engage in block play. Let's go back to the Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines to see the expectations for teachers, which extends the strategies to support children. Teachers should encourage children to make comparisons of various objects and sizes in order to help build their geometric and spatial sense. Teachers should provide children with opportunities to create designs with pattern blocks or through drawing and painting. Teachers should provide opportunities for children to cut shapes and have access to shapes to use with their artwork, as well as to provide opportunities for weaving over and under and describing attributes of both two- and three-dimensional shapes, as well as opportunities to find those shapes in the environment. Teachers should ensure that children have daily access to games and activities that encourage children to move through space and use language throughout the day to describe the attributes of shapes and their relationship in space to each other. Teachers should be taking pictures of the children's creations and recording their explanation or discussion about the structure and utilizing those displays either within the classroom or for documentation purposes. Next to the teachers, the materials and environment are important to help children grow in their understanding and development. The Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines encourages you to provide materials to the environment that represent various sizes and shapes. Provide children with opportunities for movement, as well as materials to move with. Help children with their spatial sense by providing labels on shelves with the outline or shape of the material that belongs there. 
have materials for filling and emptying, like sand or water, and puzzles for fitting together and taking apart, including geometric shapes, and games with parts to divide and put back together in order to make whole. Provide children with transparent shapes on a light table or parquetry blocks with patterns, magnetic shapes, and geoboards. Include shape stencils in your art area. Provide children with unit blocks and space to use and build with them that's devoted only for block building. It's not enough to just have the amazing teacher and the wonderful materials and environment set up in a way for children to access. It's also important to be able to assess the skills of the children in order to continue moving them forward. Teaching Strategies Gold, Objective Number 21, discusses spatial relationships and shapes. Based on this assessment, it's easy to see how a child can progress and grow by providing him or her with the right materials and the knowledgeable teacher. Think about this. You observe a child who is cleaning up the block area by putting away the blocks on the shelf by matching the blocks to the outlines. As with any assessment in early childhood, it is best to watch a child over time and gather documentation along the way for an accurate developmental understanding rather than a one-time test. When talking about assessment, it's also important to know where the kiddos are going, especially as they move into kindergarten. Here are some of the Nebraska K-12 standards dealing with geometry and spatial sense. It's important to note that by the end of kindergarten, children will be able to demonstrate these skills. Think about how the experiences that you provide before children enter kindergarten will help those children achieve success. One of the best ways to support children's learning is by ensuring that subject areas cross. Here are some examples of children's literature that can be used to help build and develop geometric and spatial sense in your early childhood classrooms. Just like in every other aspect of learning, remember that children learn best through experience. So make the books come alive and allow kids to explore shapes and spatial relationships. As adults, we often need resources to support our learning. Here are some additional resources that you can use to help you build and develop your skills in supporting children's learning of geometric and spatial sense. Based on this video, take some time to reflect on the following questions. How have your experiences with math, and more specifically with geometry, shaped, no pun intended, your teaching? How have you encouraged the children's shape development in your classrooms? And finally, how might you change some of your practices to encourage these geometric and spatial sense ideas? This concludes part two of early mathematics with a focus on geometry and spatial sense. Thank you for your time and dedication to supporting Nebraska's littlest learners. Please join me for part three to continue to engage in mathematizing the early childhood classroom through the environment and your interactions with children.